Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to tie this fly and parachute flies are one of my favorite flies to tie uh, and I'm inspired literally by the gift I got from a friend a friend sent me a beautiful gift and I want to say thank you and thank you so much because this changed my mind so much about uh, hackled flies I mean before I loved parachute flies but now I'm even tying something else and uh, by having this it changed my mind of hackle like definitely cape is the most useful one for me anyway uh, I'm gonna just talk very briefly about this cape and I'll just compare it to something that someone can get cheap this is my older cape and as you can see those feathers here first of all they're like near the f top of the cape and they're like I don't know, this is 14, size 14 more or less. And if you dig in more or less in the same spot here, you get much longer, but the size is, let me just check, not sure. Size is maybe 18 or 16 or something like that. And look at the length of these feathers. So buying some low grade cape compared to something that's like really really high grade uh, I mean it's not the highest one even but it's still like what you get for your money it's amazing I'm not paid by any means uh, this is a gift as I said from a friend uh, not from whitening company and um, the, the the product they, they, they are making is just amazing the length of the feather the, the barb count it just uh, outnumbers anything you can buy on the market so I guess uh, money-wise, this is definitely a smart choice to buy. And then when it comes to tying, uh, I'm tying those flies like crazy. Like I'm tying, let me just see, move the focus away. Okay, so I'm my, the, tr trying to practice those slip wings, traditional flies. But then, then I have some parachute flies. I have like all sorts of flies around here, laying around because I'm, I'm just tying every day. I'm just taking out and taking out and taking out and I'm just amazed by how long those feathers are. Look, they're still at the top of the cape, but they're like super long, like 20 centimeters or more long. Like It's, it's just amazing. Uh, so without any further ado, let's just get, get into materials and time. So material wise for this fly, the body is going to be this uh, turkey bite. Don't get goose. Goose is much shorter and it's not easy to wrap around the body. Turkey has length to it and you will see it here. So just one of these is probably around 3.5 3 centimeters long. So it's more than enough uh, to make your body for the fly. For the feather, obviously, I'm going to use a whitening cape, grizzly, that I just showed you. Uh, for the tail, I'm going to use my favorite tailing material and it's Cocte Leon. Uh, for the body, for sorry, for the thorax, I'm going to use uh, CDC and this is kind of orange, the rusty orange or something like that and uh, some poly yarn for the parachute post and it's half, half of the bunch. I cut the, the length and then I just split it lengthwise for the thread I'm using Nano Silk. Nano Silk uh, by Semperfly and it's 18 through 0. Several, several reasons. This one doesn't uh, make any bulk. Super strong so what I, whatever I need to cinch down I can cinch down and I do need to cinch down on parachute post to make it more rigid, to make it uh, flat and to make it uh, even so I can wrap around the hackle without any bumps that will make hackle go sideways and uh, twist and go in some weird directions so you get nicely leveled uh, barbs uh, per uh, perpendicular to your parachute post so that's all the reasons why I'm using this and the final reason would be uh, finishing off the fly just below the parachute hackle not at the head uh, I just think it's much more convenient and it's easier and more durable uh, because when you finish uh, the fly so if you, if you have your parachute hackle here and here is the head there is that hackle that goes here 
and there is a line heckle between parachute post which is here and the head that's here you have heckle over here and just assume that the trout can go there with teeth and cut it so that's why i'm not uh, finishing off the fly at the head but on the parachute post so that would be all let's just just hop in the tie so to start the fly i will first use thread which is semperfly uh, GS, uh, Semperfly GSP and I will run it through the wax. The reason to run it through the wax is very simple to make it more uh, to make more friction between my hook and my uh, thread so it doesn't slip. The thread GSP threads are slippery and as you can see like the fibers are not together so it bonds fi fibers as well but not obviously only the length that you waxed primarily just to prevent uh, thread slipping around the hook now you want to start everything like if you want your parachute post to be here start your fly there so you have a uh, kind of a reminder where you want your fly uh, well body to end uh, after you're satisfied with a couple of wraps secured everything uh, just proceed well and add some cocktail lion I don't need a thread base over here because uh, it's just going to hold everything well even without thread base. It's not some material that's going to be pulled out. I'm talking about coctelion. So align the tips together and then just pull them out. I like to align it like this and tips of the feather of the well barbs tips of the barbs are aligned with the hook band and i just remember which speckle i want to transfer at the end of the band and you got yourself always the same length of tails mm -hmm. if you want it to be half and one and a half length that's also good but for start this is more than good i like one length one hook shank or oh sorry one hook length not hook shank so before I start going into the bend, so this is going into the bend, this is going flat, yeah, I'll just stop. Now I'll cut those barbs at this side, so later on I will just have a reminder again where to stop. Uh, as I said in materials, I will use turkey biot. Turkey has longer bites and they are, they are just much easier to work with uh, for the body. For the tails, goose is perfectly fine. Now, on the bite, you have this translucent side that's pointing up. You can see my finger moving through it. And you have this side that's like, it's not translucent, it has solid color to it. That, col that side has a ridge and I want that ridge to show. So what I want to also to do is I want to make everything thinner so I can make more wraps around the body here. So I'll use my scissors to cut, to cut by it lengthwise. Okay, I made a video specifically on this one before because my friend Benjamin, he told me this one and it's a very useful trick. So you basically have more narrow by it now. And I want this translucent side to face down. See, is everything okay here? Yes. Okay, it's going to face down. Everything is okay. Now I can cover body with wraps. Now at this point, I want to add parachute post. So I'll take half of the clump that I cut, maybe even less, because I want to double it over. Just eyeball it. What I want to do is I'm just twisting it to make it together. So it stays together. One, two in front, and then two behind. And because this is not a super small fly, you can do a couple of more reps if you wish. Go around to make it together. Okay, that's it. Now, you got it secured. Uh, wraps that are going here and here are going to prevent this from slipping. 
So if you are, uh, you can do two things. You can put some super glue over here, or you can just put some additional wraps, and then go one, two around, then additional wraps. And I'm taking care that like the thread should be um, flat. So I'm making here nice taper as well. And I'm not concerned about those wraps here because feather is not going to be here. Uh, dubbing will cover this up. Oops. Okay. I've got one, and then one, two, one, one, two, and you got yourself a nice solid base that's not going to twist on you. Now, again, with flat thread, we need to make a solid base for parachute, and by we are going to do that by like making a couple of wraps and then push the parachute pose away from you and pull the thread towards you to tighten everything, to compress the fibers. And then again, make a couple of wraps and by making a couple of them go up, covering the length. And then when you're satisfied, then just pull and compress. It's important to do that with flat thread. You want to make as smooth uh, parachute post for your hackle as possible because your hackle will lay flat on that. Okay, let me see. Am I satisfied? Yes. But I would like maybe one or two more wraps. Okay, I dropped it. Never mind. Pull away. And then just go down. And we have a very rigid parachute post over here. Now, it's time to wrap the bayet. Uh, some people do add some super glue, some people don't. I love to add super glue, but I am using gel super glue. Super glue in gel is much easier to control and it's not gonna run away all over your fly, ruining everything. That would be a like big misfortune. Uh, it's just easier to, to work with. So what I'm going to do is, it's a bit old, so I need to squeeze it out. Okay. I have it on my tissue. So I'll just squeeze out and take just a small little drop of it. And you can just make a line, like so. You don't have to go all around the hook shank. The reason for that is very simple. I'm going to disperse it to, to, to around the hook shank with the bayet. So look what happens now. I'm going to turn around to buy it like so. Okay, I went too close with my buy it. That's why my tail is reacting over here. My lamp is again too close. Never mind. So just make everything and uh, go around. And the bayet will push super glue around a little bit. If it's more fresh, it's gonna be all around the hook shank. This one is obviously not super fresh, but it is going around the hook shank. So wrap everything nicely. I made a mistake with bayet. I should have attached it from my opposite side because the first wrap would go under the hook away from tails. I made that mistake. So bear in mind that you should uh, make that uh, to, you should tie in the bayet from the opposite side if you're right hand tire. Okay, at this point, you can see why I like uh, to cut it lengthwise because if I didn't, this I couldn't be able, I wouldn't be able to make this final wrap over here. And I think it makes aesthetically a lot of difference. Now, two. Cut everything here. Just 
two, three. That looks good. Nice body. I obviously compensated nicely because tails, they remained on the top of the hook shank, which is what I wanted. Uh, but neck, like just remember, putting the opposite, like buy it on, uh, on the opposite side of you would uh, save you some pro from some trouble. Now, I'll just do some other aesthetic thing and it's making a head over here. It's just a thing that I like to do since I'm not making, per uh, I'm not securing the hackle near the head. I can make head right now. And you can make it obviously as big as you want. Okay, that should make a nice decent head. Now to prepare a hackle, you should remove some barbs from the rachis. And as you can see, it's not symmetrical. One side has more barbs than the other. And that side with less barbs will go first to make a wrap. These are going to push and make the way for all the other barbs. Uh, now the length of the barbs, as you can see, when it's wrapped around, it's going to be around or past the hook bend. I like it that way because it makes my fly float better. Fish won't mind and it makes much better and much more buoyant fly. Counter spin the popping holder to catch everything right. Now I'll show you something else. If I did everything right, let me just go and see. Should be okay. Now, okay. Now look where my I'll point with with that point. Look where is the end of the parachute post, and my barbs are exactly there. You can go with barbs a little bit more up, but it it is important that these barbs are bare here. That you remove these barbs. You will see soon why. So I'll go with shiny side facing me. I'll go around and secure this hackle. Again, it's imperative that you do it with flat thread to make this to maintain this flat base so the hackle can can go over flat surface and you have more predictable result at the end. Now another thing to consider here is not to go with your thread all the way till the end to the, of the parachute post but one rep less one uh, well rake is thickness less to be precise let me see if you can it, if you can see it here let's do it the, the opposite way oh it, it's going to unravel but never mind so instead of going all the way here just stay up here it will make your first wrap go exactly at the top point meaning that your wrap won't go into the won't go into the uh, this yarn it will go over the parachute post but if you make all those wraps up until top your feather will very likely go into the not rigid parachute uh, yarn and then the barbs will go all the way around. Now I need to make some CDC dubbing and for that I prepared one half of the feather. I'll just go simple and I'll just pinch out and twist everything around making a nice dubbing noodle over here. You don't need to be super fancy about that, about this. The reason why I chose CDC for this is because it was exactly the color I needed for this fly. Uh, I don't have dubbing in, in proper, super fine dubbing in proper color. Actually, I don't, I don't have any super fine dubbing at the moment. Okay, this should be it. Now, go here and cover cover the bite a little bit and then go forward up until the head and then go back and here you should go a little bit crisscross wraps just to cover up everything here now if you're satisfied with the result uh, you can proceed on but I'm not 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of more dubbing because I feel that I need to create a little bit more of a bulk here in the middle. Okay, and that I will do with crisscrossing here. And that should be it. And I'll finish behind. What I like to do is just like to give it that velvety uh, feeling. So I'm just gonna remove all those CDC barbs that are st sticking out. And for this, obviously, you need some good scissors. Okay. You don't have to do this. This is just an aesthetic thing. And there is something here. That's it. Now, at this point, twist your hook in the vise. And let me just lift it up. Okay. Now look, why is the reason why did I make so rigid post? Let me just add a little bit of super glue here. This is the last drop of super glue I need. And this will make this fly almost indestructible. So just here, tiny little drop. I don't even need to to hold this. As you can see, it doesn't go over the yarn. It goes directly on the parachute post. Now go under, so just go on the first wrap. Let me see if I did it right. Okay, now I did. So go under and go under, but try to make those wraps as compressed as you can. And let me see if I can squeeze one more there. Yeah, I did it. Now, what I will do is I will counter spin my bobbin holder, but you can do clockwise spin as well. It's not important. It's important to cord the thread. Then now, one, two wraps. I'll check if everything lays flat and nice. So far it does. But last step is to make thre uh, thread flattened and to put all those wraps, all those wraps of whip finish, to put them under those barbs to kind of lift them up or make them just even, parallel to the water. That's the last step to make this fly work. Obviously, I don't need parachute post anymore to be so long, so I'll just cut it a bit longer than I need because when you make the cut it will actually make it shorter because of the crinkles in the in the poly yarn now with my hands or with your tool let's do it with a tool this time uh, i'll go around so you go around and under all of those barbs and then tighten the knot Okay, I'll just cut, cut, snip off the, the hackle, just open your scissors and push them against the rakes. Don't close the scissors, just push. So that way you won't cut any more barbs around parachute post. Uh, if you do this one, you'll cut some inevitably. Now let me see, is everything right here? Well, looks okay to me. I'll do one more wrap, one more whip finish. Now, again, go all around those barbs and under. And that's it. That's it. I got myself nice parachute fly. And parachute I like because it sits low in the film. It's super buoyant. It imitates those emergers that are easy prey for the trout. And trout 
they rarely miss the, the opportunity to eat parachute flies so guys if you like this video please give it a like subscribe and see you next week